Do you remember the last time any news came out about a new FNAF game? Yeah, that, uh, uh, that seems about right. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> am I so old that I have to now explain 2001 Space Odyssey references? Regardless, it's been quite some time since the last FNAF teaser. And finally, after half a year of waiting, Scott decided to deliver with not just one, not just two, but eight. What did you say, seven? It can't be seven! Say eight, damn it! Eight is better! Teaser images for the new FNAF VR game, Help Wanted! Look at them, they're beautiful. I, I mean, they're, they're actually not. They're in black and white and all pixely. But beautiful nonetheless! Strength comes from how you look on the inside, people, not the outside. And FNAF obviously gets that. Of course, with any info dump from FNAF's genius mastermind, Scott Cawthon, comes a scooping room load of information. And, and questions, and well, the, the, this time is no different. So let's go through what we think, what we know, and what to expect from Help Wanted. Now, before I get into all the images, let me just address the elephant-sized animatronic bear in the room. The main teaser image has been removed from scottgames.com. This image, once this teaser image was released, Reddit, as Reddit does, decided to pick through it with a fine-tooth microscopic comb and, well, they, they found some less than fortunate results. Mainly that the prime teaser image traced at least some aspects of fan models. Just as an example, check out this Funtime Foxy made by Gabo Coart, if that is how you say the name. If we transpose Gabo's foxy head onto the foxy in the image, it becomes extremely apparent that at least some of this Funtime Foxy was copied from Gabo. Here's the official Funtime Foxy. Do you see the difference between the fan-made model and the original? Namely, the ears and the cheekbones. The official Funtime Foxy has longer and thinner ears and wider cheekbones. The teaser image definitely shares the ears of the fan-made model. Other Redditors are also skeptical about the validity of Freddy and Bonnie. Personally, I haven't found the Freddy argument particularly convincing yet, but maybe I just haven't found the right image to check it against. Bonnie, however, is a different story. There's an extremely valid argument that Bonnie was taken from the fan game The Pop Goes Pizzeria. Take a look at Spring Bonnie in that game, and place that model next to the Bonnie in the teaser image. It looks basically identical minus the obvious changes in color and texture. There isn't a single Bonnie in Five Nights at Freddy's that truly looks like the one in that image. Pretty scandalous, right? Now, in all fairness, Scott did respond to this criticism with a Reddit post that says, Hey everyone, I was really looking forward to teasing something new for you today. I've been working on so many things over the last six months, but I can always count on you guys to call foul when you see a foul. And I appreciate that. I can't tell you how many times I've put a halt to a toy or a poster because Reddit informed me that it was using a fan model. So I hope you can all imagine my devastation to learn that my first teaser in more than half a year was made using questionable choices at best, and traced fan models at worst. I've taken the image down, and I'm going to be thinking about where to go from here. The only thing I care about is doing right by this community. If you read between Scott's lines here, we can learn a couple things. First off, Scott isn't making these images himself. He's overseeing the production, but he's got so many other things on his plate that it's understandable he isn't scrutinizing each image for hours and hours because he's assuming that the artists he hired are doing original work. He's trusting people to do their job, and apparently that trust got misplaced somewhere. It's not Scott's fault, but because he's the creator of the franchise, he's gonna be the one to shoulder the most responsibility. Hence the apology coming from him, and not whatever company or artist made the image. Next, we can tell this sort of thing happens all the time. It's just unfortunate Scott didn't catch it before it went live. And perhaps, most importantly, Scott definitely thinks there's issues with the arts, and hence why he took it down. But he's not sure exactly what happened yet, and he's still figuring out the details. He gave us a spectrum. The art was made using questionable choices at best and traced fan models at worst. Scott hasn't completely acknowledged that these are fan-made models yet. He wants to make sure he has the whole story before making an announcement like that. But at the very least, the similarities bring into question whether the teaser image is completely original. I think it becomes apparent it's not, especially when looking at the Bonnie model. Now, I want to applaud Scott for the promptness of his post. He 
he addressed it before I even knew it was an issue. It's obvious Scott really cares about the FNAF community and he wants to do right by it in any way he can. And people pointing out flaws and issues is one of the ways to achieve that goal. So, all in all, this wasn't too bad of an issue. People came together, Scott listened, and took down the images. But we still got information on the upcoming FNAF game. So, let's go into that. What do we know about this new FNAF game? Well, from the teaser images, we can plainly see that it takes place or uses multiple games within it. Just take a look at the original image. We're getting FNAF 1, Freddy, Foxy, and Bonnie, but also Funtime Foxy and Springtrap or Spring Bonnie. It's hard to say for sure about the last one because the image is a fan mod, but either way, this image has characters from three different games. So I don't think we should be expecting the VR game to take place in just one FNAF game, but perhaps over over various games. The top left gives us a small quote from Fazbear Entertainment. Everything is working as intended, which can be taken a variety of ways. It could be Scott saying, the games are coming along great. It could also be a quote from newspaper where Fazbear Entertainment is trying to improve their PR by saying now everything is working as intended. We know Scott likes to use newspapers to give us information, so it wouldn't surprise me at all if that's exactly what was going on here. The image also has a hidden message, as you might expect. Scott has never been shy about hiding messages in teaser images. You can just barely make out the words, Don't listen to them. We let something inside. It was an accident. Remember Jeremy. Jeremy! Remember Jeremy? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But the only Jeremy we knew was from FNAF 2. Which is perhaps exactly why Scott put this message in there. It's tying in FNAF 2, giving us more proof this game is going to take place over a variety of pizzerias. Now, let's take a look at some of the other teaser images that really help us flesh out what's going on. First off, let's take a look at this Springtrap image. Now, this is obviously the FNAF 3 setting, but we're getting a different camera angle than we're used to, and this is a big reason people have been saying these images are pointing to a VR game. We're getting images from scenes we're familiar with, but from new and strange angles. And that heavily points towards us having freedom to look wherever we'd like within this game, which in turn points to VR. Let's move on to one of the images I'm most excited about because of what it represents. Now, at first glance, this Chica image might not tell us much. It's FNAF 1 Chica, and she's in a room that's kind of difficult to place. And there's a reason for that. We have a couple clues where we are, mainly this rack on the right, and what looks to me like a big cup holder tray on the left. I believe this is a kitchen. FNAF 1's kitchen, to be specific. The shelves look like baking shelves, which would be used for pizza, bread, you know, carbs. And if you've ever worked in a kitchen, you would know that there are trays specifically for washing cups. So you could stack a ton of them on all at once and get a bunch of them washed all at once. That's what the left-hand side tray looks like to me. Now, this image is extremely important because of what it represents. If this is indeed the FNAF 1 kitchen, and it certainly seems that way considering we have FNAF 1 Chica here, it means we're going to be able to move freely to areas that we've never seen before. If you remember playing FNAF FNAF 1, the kitchen camera, camera 6, was always disabled. We've never seen that area before. If we have free will to move around the pizzerias in this game, that means there could be secrets hidden everywhere. It means we may be able to go into the secret rooms that animatronics didn't have built in their floor plans. It means we may be able to see what happened in certain areas where children were killed. This image opens up a whole realm of possibilities. The next image we're going to take a look at is this one of Baby. From the looks of things, I believe we're in the FNAF 4 house. Since the FNAF 4 house and sister location are connected, Connected, it's entirely possible that Baby could be here. I think this is FNAF 4 for a few reasons. First, look at how the image is framed. We have what looked like the closet doors that Foxy was in around us. And second, it's kind of hard to tell, but behind Baby is the bed from FNAF 4. Take a look at the bedspread. It's the same design as the FNAF 4 bedspread. That's proof enough for me that we're hiding in the FNAF 4 bedroom. Now, remember that Baby is programmed to kill children, specifically when they're by themselves. She has a counting mechanism programmed in, and when there's only one child, she strikes. To me, this looks like we're hiding from Baby's sight in the closet. See how you can see her eye beams? It's kind of like a game where you can see the enemy's vision cone, and we have to stay out of the animatronic's vision cones, or 
we die. Of course, this is just a guess, but there's another vision cone coming from the right side, and we don't see vision cones in any other image, so it seems incredibly likely to me. There are a few more bonus images that didn't have as big of an impact on me because they didn't show anything particularly interesting. Bonnie is just Bonnie. Open Freddy means we likely need to fix him. Maybe we're playing as a mechanic here, but not in the entire game considering the shot in the bedroom. It's possible we play as a variety of people, all from the FNAF universe. I think most of the rest of these images are just showing us other shots from within the game, but they aren't giving us much knowledge as to what else is going on. However, there is one image that can only be found by compiling a bunch of numbers and letters in the source code and the title bar of the website. Upon putting all these things together, we get this image. Now this image is incredibly strange. It's far more unclear than the rest, and it's not a full picture. It's like a picture taken from a camera phone, if you think about it. Its proportions make much more sense that way. But there's even more concrete evidence. If you look into the properties of the image under the Details tab, you can see the image was taken on an iPhone 6S Plus. Ha! Now I know what phone you have, Scott! The running theory for this image is that this isn't from the games at all. It's a special teaser for the movie, hence it being harder to find than the rest. Supposedly, it's a real endoskeleton. But to me, it's so difficult to make out, I wouldn't bet on it. However, what it does show us is that Scott has more than just VR in the works. Things are coming, people. Big things. Those are all the most important points from the new FNAF teasers. I think it's pretty exciting we're gonna basically have free reign in VR to go throughout all the locations. There's surely a lot more questions right now than answers, per usual. But with these new teasers, we've been given a lot more information despite the fact they were taken down almost immediately. I think we should expect the VR game to come out quite soon. Maybe over the summer? It's exciting stuff, and I think it's really cool that we're heading into a new era for the franchise. We're past the storyline games and coming to a time where the story can best be filled out with extra content. That's what I'm hoping for, but do let me know what you think down below. Also, let me know if I missed anything, and also, what did you think of the teaser images? We're interested to hear what you have to say. Anyway, that's all for me today. I'm Grant, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!